everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of Checkpoint Chats. We are now in the adult phase of the, the podcast. The legal episode. It's being kicked out of the house. Officially. Officially, yeah. So it's the third time now we've kicked this podcast out of the house. Yeah, I think. This, time it, this time it's legal. It has to get a job nothing, now. <laughs> nothing it can do about it. So yeah, how are you, how you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just sipping some tea. It's still what early in the morning tea? and it's like... No Red Bull. No, no Red Bull today. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be healthier. <laughs> Is there Red Bull in that tea? Yes, maybe. Red Bull tea. <laughs> Red Bull. Could you imagine how nasty that would taste? Like, no, I like the taste of Red Bull. To be honest. Yeah, but you, but you tea. also like. Um, I know after work on Fridays, you guys Red have Square. Yeah, oh. yeah, you guys have your drinks and you just drink Red Square. Yeah, what, what's wrong with Red Square? Red Red Bull and vodka is like the gets worst the heart thing going. Heart. Man. Oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> Makes my heart feel alive <laughs> and dead. No, <laughs> no none of that. Jesus. I don't. I'm, I, I don't think caffeine has an effect on me because i remember in high school and varsity like you know we're gonna pull an all-nighter drinking coffee and still sleeping like a baby mm. and even today like i'm tired i need a coffee and i drink it but I'm, I'm still pretty tired so i don't know i'm fairly the same i feel like it's a a placebo almost for me like i when i feel tired and i feel like i need to be productive i'll get a red bull um, <laughs> but like i can have a sip of Red Bull or, or a can of Red Bull like 10 minutes before I go to sleep and I'll fall asleep. Like, yeah, no I'm the same. No issues. But then you say like it's a placebo. Maybe your your mind's like, this doesn't actually do anything, but... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, maybe, maybe you feel you're that actually it's sleeping something. like super well because your brain's still like super... I don't know. Do you, do you dream vividly after? Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, man. I and see do, color. Do you have wings in your dream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's marketing right there. I, I don't know. Some people like they say that as soon as they drink a Red Bull, they get like shakes, like caffeine shakes. Uh, but like a Red Bull doesn't have more caffeine than a cup of coffee. Doesn't so, it? No, is not it, really. So what is it, the the energy? Is that taurine? Taurine. It's taurine whatever. and just sugar. Gen, ginseng. Like, no. So much <laughs> sugar in that thing. Like uh, v- Visually speaking, how many, is it a cup of sugar? Is that, how uh, many sugars I, do you think I are just, in there? I just know, I look at the, the sugar content on that thing and the calorie count. And it's like 900 calories in a can. Don't lie. You, you look at the sugar cans and you say, sweet. Uh, it's, no, oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> it's sweet, man. So sweet. <laughs> and, and you look at the, the thing and it's like, oh, this is a serving size. And then you look down you're like, oh, serving size is only 250 mils. And I've got like a, oh, a 400 a, a, a mil liter. bottle <laughs> or can or whatever. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm just putting like a good 80 grams of sugar yeah, into me. Yeah, to get you up. going, man. Get you going through the day. Yeah, and that's why you crash so hard afterwards because it's just like that sugar <laughs> high just like completely destroys yeah, you. Yeah, sugar does that to me. I, I have like a cupcake and I'm like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> you get cupcakes so often at your At office. work. I know, which it's, it's exactly why I brought it up because we have cupcakes at work mm. and we'll eat them. We'll usually have them at like... Two or three. Is it provided by the office? By the office, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, for people's birthdays. So once a week, if, if there's like three people's birthday in a week, we'll celebrate them on that Wednesday, whatever. And you should have it every single day. <laughs> I think we were having it every like every time that happened and it was proving to be quite a cost because there are a lot of people. So I think at one point we had about nearly 100 people in the office. Oh, God. So you're getting okay. cake like every two or three days. like At least depending, twice a week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... I think I think HR finance are like listen. This is proving to be a bit bit beyond our means. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've just lumped it into a weekly thing. But we get cupcakes and then you eat them and it's yeah, it's delicious. And then you're like, I've still got three hours of work to go. <laughs> How am I, I going to make cupcakes. it? Clean? Miniature cakes are the coolest thing. Yeah, like, uh, I've been watching fans. this um the series on on Netflix called Chef's Table, which is really really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I like cooking things. Like mm-hmm. I I like cooking shows. Um. <clears throat> Anyway, the show is just like each episode is profiling a very famous cook in the world. Oh, yeah. And uh, the latest season is all about pastries. Oh. Um, and the one the one chef that they profiled is a lady called Christina Tosi, who was a judge on was a judge on MasterChef um, America. And just like the way she talks about cake, like just <laughs> it fascinates me. She's like she's like a pa- one of the best pastry chefs in the world, and she's like I hate cake. What? She's like, I hate cake because everyone focuses on what the cake looks like and not what it tastes. Oh uh, yeah. So she made That's a true. cake where like the the batter and the sponge is the main attraction. She like designed it with a uh, perspex like uh, plastic around it. Oh yeah. Um, and she doesn't ice it at the end. So the uh, cake you see, she decorates the sponge, and 
she never covers it all up in icing. She's like, that's the stupidest thing. Like you've got this beautiful cake and the first thing you want to do is cover it all up in icing so that no one can see it. Yeah. And I was just like, shit, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd eat that. That's part of the surprise though. And you cut to the icing mm. like, oh, it's a red velvet cake. I had no idea. <laughs> but that's always the thing <laughs> I've wondered. It's a rainbow like, cake. Did you ever watch the Cake Boss uh, program? Yeah, years ago. And I was just like, they always focus on how clever he's, like how clever the designs are and how awesome they look. And I'm like, yeah, they look fucking good, but... Like, does the cake, the cake taste good? It's like sawdust. And also, <laughs> all of it has fondant, and fondant is garbage. Fond, fondant. Fondant, fondant is <laughs> terrible. That it's just, it, it's cool to decorate stuff with, but it tastes It doesn't terrible. taste great, yeah. I'd rather just have, like, butter icing. Oh, no, I want cake. <laughs> what's, your, what's your stance oh. on ice cream cake? On ice cream cake? Shit, there's nothing wrong with the ice cream cake. I haven't had one for years, though. Yeah, I haven't had I mean, one for ages. Actually, yeah, ice cream cake's still a thing. Yeah, I don't know. I remember as a kid. Yeah, growing growing up, it's the thing. It's like, oh, it's your birthday. We bought you an ice cream cake. It was it's always like, wow. like, a, like a to and fro. You, you'd look at the cake as soon as you arrived at the party. You're like, is it an oh, ice cream know. cake? Is the is the cake melting? Yeah, is it melting? And you're looking at it. You're like, shit. I really just wanted like a chocolate cake. Yeah. What is this? What is this garbage? And no, then you I, have to like get your cake in a cone. Like, well, like, now that she's <laughs> serves cake in a cone. Well, it's ice cream. Although you, you do get you do get those. Um, what is it called? Like it's like a cupcake in a mug. You get recipes for that where you Those like are good. you mix it something something, throw it in the microwave, an instant cupcake. McDonald's is like, a cup of cake. It's oh, fucking good. It's like gosh. warm at the bottom and, and they've cold ice cream. You just told us you're trying to live healthier. I know. And you, I know. But that cupcake, McDonald's. like like McDonald's desserts are generally not that great. Um, but that cupcake I like, is. I like the McFlurries. Yeah, I'm the McFlurries. Not, good. Not I trash. wish there were more flavors of the McFlurries though. Uh, it's just fucking Oreo. It's Oreo. There used to be an Ash. Do you remember the Ash to one? Yeah, do they not make it anymore? No. There used to be a crunchy one, I think. Mm-hmm. Ash to. I have a I have a friend who um, moved here from France, and uh, she loves McFlurries. Mm-hmm. And she was distraught when she came here and found out that there wasn't a McFlurry with M and M's because apparently there's one in Ooh, France with peanuts M and M's. I was like, shit, shit, that, that good. sounds good. good. Yeah, they should make a five star McFlurry. <laughs> yeah, Cadbury, fucking get on that shit. Because let's be honest, look at all those those custom slabs now. I mean, it's got it's all so the good, good ones now. Now they just need a custom McFlurries. One of my favorites of the slabs is that PS one. Like I've, I don't that's like the one I haven't tried. Actually, I've, I've actually got some in the fridge. <gasps> oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's so good. <laughs> we'll, we'll so be good. right back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is not a food podcast. Um, we, we, should food we should podcast do a food podcast. We should do a food podcast, though. I like just, food. Just talk about I McDonald's. Like, I, I nearly, I nearly <laughs> wanted to go into like chef school before games. I, I went to a stint where I was like, oh, I'd like to be a chef. Too. Yeah, but then I was like, sounds great. Looking on it now, I'm like, no, nah, I think it's way too much hard work. Yeah, it's like a you, lot. You dedicate your life to that yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is Checkpoint Chat episode 18. We the are legal episode. talking about games. Yeah, the the drinking episode. We should just get hammered here. Like, well, celebrate. I've got. I don't know about you. I've got straight vodka in this glass here. Oh, I thought I poured you water. You've got. <laughs> well, you've got straight tea. Yeah, straight living tea. living life on the edge. Well, you've got Red Bull tea, so it's fine. Red Bull tea, exactly. Yeah, this is um, straight vodka. You can catch us every week on Monday mornings on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, and pretty much anywhere else you it's find your podcast. If there's everything. anywhere that you want us to be that we aren't um give us a shout except if it's soundcloud because fuck soundcloud <laughs> hit us up except for soundcloud yeah, except for SoundCloud. <laughs> um and yeah you can obviously send us questions to the show at checkpoint chat on twitter and at checkpoint chat podcast at gmail.com i always put at in slide, front of that slide into so, our dms as well yeah slide into mm. our dms our dms are open matty yeah. will set up a facebook page one day oh <laughs> sorry I was, I was meant to do that this week i just never got around to it but i will Shocking. I will set up a Facebook page and then, yeah, you could probably leave us questions well, there as well. You're not writing copy for shampoo. <sighs> yeah, which I actually did some. Was, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did see that uh, photo of you with straightened head. It was it was it glorious? It was She's fabulous. like, I was fabulous AF. I, at first, I thought it was a wig and I was like, there's no <laughs> way a wig is fitting on your head. So. Everyone thought my hair was cut. Oh. And by everyone, I, th- I mean my mom and Lenska, they're like, did, did they cut your hair? <laughs> I was like, at the office? Are you crazy? <laughs> like, no, no, they're just straight. At it. first, I thought it was like an app. You know, like <laughs> one of those that it's like, try out the hairstyle before you, yeah, yeah. you know, one of those. Just, I laughed and I saw myself. I was like, yeah, was so I, I really am fabulous AF. And then I wet my hair it, and went curly again. It honestly looks like you, you were about to call for a manager somewhere <laughs> and complain. Like, There's a fly in my soup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I was so keen to see it the next day because I was but, on a Friday, but I oh, knew no. like as soon as the water touches it. Like, Shit, but now that you mentioned about complaining to him, I should have gone to like the first Woolies, near, nearby Woolies. Yeah. And be like, where's your manager? <laughs> I need These to complain. These only have five chocolate chips What is this? This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of games... Yes. We like talking about games that we've been Some, playing during the week. Sometimes we do. What have you been playing? <laughs> you want to start with me? I've, I've, I've played one whole game this week. Do it. Go. Go. And and that game was uh, God of War. But more God of War? More God of War, except... Dad the, of Boy? The, the difference here yeah, is a Boy of Dad is that mm. I've actually platinumed That's crazy. God of Boy. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, I played, finished the game, I suppose about a month ago um maybe a bit longer i don't know but then i just finished it and i was like i do want to platinum it one day but i'm like i'm done for now so but la- last week i started fighting through the valkyries and then this week i did the the whole thing of like killing all of odin's ravens and finding the artifacts and i finally platinumed it hmm. um but yeah we've never actually spoken of the end game or anything mm. beyond yeah, that so let's, i think we are far enough removed from God of War. So if you're if uh, you're still getting through it and you don't want to hear spoiler, I don't yeah, think we're um, gonna go heavy into like story spoilers, but no. just like end game content. Yeah, but uh, I'm gonna come out and I, I, I lent my copy to John Michael on Friday. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so if no, you're listening does, to this, just just turn turn this. turn this off and uh, skip ahead. <laughs> to, yes, skip and ahead. then my brother Mark he hasn't played it. You you can't have this spoiled for you. So just skip ahead. Yeah, yeah. If you're on Anchor, it's all segmented by topics anyway. So if you're not, just go ahead like. 15 minutes whatever. yeah and, and just see if we're still talking about it yeah yeah um yeah God of ba- War. basically no. what i want to know mostly is um i've only platinumed i think two or three games yeah. and the first one i ever platinumed was um final fantasy 15 and the only reason i did it was because at the end of my natural playthrough mm. i looked at the trophies and there was like maybe two or three mm. and i was like oh those seem pretty That's easy doable, to get yeah. yeah so it was like it was a matter of like you know, I'm so close, I might as well. Whereas a lot of other games, I look at the trophy list and you finished your first play- playthrough and you're like 30%. I'm like, yeah, you're Fuck like, that nah, yeah. no, yeah, those are still away. So, from. how how does God of War compare to that? Uh, God of War was fun. I mean, I wanted to do a lot of the side stuff. So, so, the trophies do include like, you know, finish the quest, but then it's like, go do all the fire trials, go to the mist realm, you know, the, where you do the maze and everything. Oh, those are the two additional realms. Yeah. yeah. The, so, Muselheim and Nifelheim. Um, Nifelheim, yeah. Uh, Muselheim, yeah. I think it's those two. Yeah. Um, but it's like, go complete those. There's trophies tied to those. Then there's trophies tied to like killing all the Valkyries and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but that stuff I wanted to do anyway because the game is so good. I mean, the like the mist realm, have you dabbled with it at all? Yeah, so it's like, well, give give an explanation of, of so, what goes on there. So is it is it Nifelheim? Nifelheim. I think M- it's Nifelheim is the, the Mussel, fire. Nifelheim is the fire one. Yeah, which that's, doesn't that's doesn't the make sense trial. to no to me because I'm like Mistelheim. No, no, no like, definitely not. <laughs> Nifelheim is yeah, is the, 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 the misty one. one. Yeah. So uh, Nifelheim, you go there, and apparently there's there's like a, is it a vault or something? Anyways, there's a maze there with loot in it. Um, but this maze constantly shifts, um, but it's covered with like a mist, surprise, and this mist is slowly poisonous, I guess. Like yeah. you can't, you know, sniff for too long a time because you'll die. Yeah. Um, so what you end up doing is you you do runs into this maze. Um, you fight enemies along the way and you try to collect as much. I think it's mist echoes. There's like a collectible resource in there that you can collect um, and you use that to craft armor and upgrade armor, and there's just a lot of other goodies in there. Um, but it was just, f- I enjoyed that round because you're doing runs, you're in and out in like 10 minutes, 20 mm-hmm. minutes. Um, and there's, it's just fun fighting randomized enemies, and it's you, you eventually figure out like patterns and whatnot, but it, it was just still fun. And like there was a, a Valkyrie in there as well. So, oh, is there a Valkyrie in there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I didn't even so you know have that. to, yeah, you have to find your way to the valkyrie killer oh, and get out <laughs> before, time. yeah but it, it's actually not That's so bad because one, one there's armor you craft there that um lets you be in the mist for much longer okay. you know okay so eventually yeah like it, time's ticking down but it's not as hardcore as if you walk in there without any armor because then yeah, you're there like the getting the time limit yeah then you're there for like two minutes whatever the hell mm. the hell it is and you like have to get out um, so it actually it's fun i mean you, you get to a point oh and one thing i realize is that when you open chests they give you a bit of breath or whatever like it extends your time yeah bubbles like <laughs> if you're gonna see it as that sort of mechanic 
Um, so there's that. And then uh, Musselheim, the fire realm, was all about doing these hard trials where it's like, it starts off easy enough. It's like kill 20 enemies, you know, without dying. Um, you do that, then adventure becomes a lot harder. It's like kill 100 enemies. Kill all these enemies without taking any damage. Yeah. Kill all these enemies within the time limit, but then there are circles in the ground where you have to kill the enemies. You can't just run up yeah. to them. You have to like bait them it's to like the circle. King of the hills. Yeah. Oh. So there's there's there are those challenges were really difficult. Some of them. Yeah. Oh my god. I've done some of them, and I remember the one. I don't know if it was one where I couldn't take damage or I had to beat a certain number of enemies within a specified time, but it was just all elves. Oh uh, yeah! Fuck it! It but took me so long. I wonder like, if we I were str- if we were on the same because there was one where you fight like that um that dark elf mini boss. Yes, the dude who flies, and then when he's when his health is really low, he's got this move where he like flies up and he just charges straight at yeah, you. Yeah, and, and it would like and it's like it's an you. instant kill. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the one I'm thinking. Um, of, yeah. I can't remember what the parameters were for that, but shit, like ma- maybe that was the don't take damage one. It might have been. I I, I remember, remember it being like it. It was probably the hardest battle I've I've had in that game, but yeah. I haven't finished like all the Valkyries and whatever. But I remember that and being really frustrated at that. But, but when I got you, it, like oh. you know that you, you do those trials and you make your way to the top. There's a Valkyrie at the top. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> then you kill the Valkyrie and those trials reset. Essentially, there's harder versions of them, and you have to redo those harder versions you, as well. You? I don't know. Wait, no. To get the trophy. I think you have to do all of them to get that trophy. <laughs> no. So, but here's Ooh. the thing. So, if, you, if you're going for the trophy and you don't enjoy that, mm. like, then this isn't a platinum for you. But I want to do that content because mm. I like, yeah, it's hard. But the thing with that sort of game I've explained before is, is you just get such a sense of satisfaction. So, to me, like, yeah, there were a few times I was like, oh my God, like, I can't do this. But when you do it, you're like, mm. so I ended up doing all of that stuff and beating the Valkyries and then. Look at the trophy. Apparently, the last Valkyrie. Sorry oh, to interrupt. That. The last Valkyrie. No, is apparently the, I, insane. I'm glad you interrupted because I actually want to talk about the Valkyries because the yeah. thing is, the first the first Valkyrie you fight, it's, it's really challenging because you're like, oh my god, yeah, how does this boss work? Yeah. Whatever. Um, but I found so I've, I struggled with like the first two, let's say, but then three through to eight. Yeah, it was challenging, but by the last three were actually a bit of a walkover. I think maybe because I just knew their patterns or my armor is really good. I don't know. Because they all have a um, specific attack yeah, pattern. They, they yeah, they have. Yeah, some of them have unique attack patterns, but there's an overlap. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you start recognizing exactly what they're going to do. But then the last one, holy shit balls. That must have taken me... When was that? Was that... That was actually last week. Um, I started... It was funny because I, I'd walked through the last three Valkyries. I'm like, I just have to beat the last one now and I mm. get this trophy. It was like 10. 10, it, half past 10. Is that 10 that one evening. in that ring? Yeah. Okay, cool. At so the, the council is. or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so it was like 10, half past 10. I'm like, I just have to beat one. You know, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it and I'll go to bed normal time. I got to bed at half past one because I'd, I'd reached a point where I was like, I'm not going to bed until <laughs> I've beat this fucking Valkyrie. <laughs> no, but the reason she's difficult in particular though, so she's got all the moves of them. Oh, okay. Uh, well, all the Valkyrie's moves, but she's got a much bigger health pool and she's like ridiculously quick. So like there's just moments where you like you 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 should react, but you're like you're just too slow and you mm. take the damage mm. and yeah. So I ended up having to change my build specifically for that, which is something I've never done in God of War. And I don't generally worry about builds in games. I'm not that deep into RPGs. I'm like, I want to optimize. Like, don't get me wrong, I will upgrade my armor mm-hmm. and this, but I'm not like one of those people who's like, I need to optimize my build so that I can do this and this and whatever. And God of War gives you the chance because there's so many and, items yeah. that are like, oh, this is good in this area. And I was Yeah, like, but that, that's what's cool about the game. So if you, I assume if you, I play it on hard, but there's a harder difficulty um i assume if you're playing on that then you have to really be like shit i need to equip mm-hmm. this armor mm-hmm. for that um but for this last valkyrie i was like okay i actually need armor that like gives me health regen and i had um one of the perks i had there's a low chance to proc like health regen okay so you obviously have to hit her to proc to hopefully proc the health regen but hitting her you know it's it's like a tiny chance i end up equipping an amulet that slows down time for uh, i've seen that one yes. i think when it's fully upgraded it's five seconds yeah so i had to rely on that like slow down time quickly go and hit and just pray that i got some sort of health regen like if i was low in health and one the one trick i actually learned do you remember that move where uh kratos throws the axe yeah oh uh, well, it spins around if, if you hold the the light attack but yeah yes. and it spins the yes. 
that actually every little hit counts as a chance to proc. Oh, okay, that's pretty which, useful. Which is something I learned toward the end of the game. So you know, um, if you want to build up your frosts, mm -hmm. you could hold your light attack, and because it spins and it hits the enemy like six or seven times instead of you going like one, two, hmm. three, that came in handy knowing that because when I slow down time, I'd do that attack spin like tick, 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 like please proc, please proc. Shit, mm -hmm. it didn't proc. Like yeah. to be defensive and like hope I don't get killed, which nine of ten times I did get killed. But that's um, a really cool, like, it just shows how deep the combat yeah, in, in God of War is. Like, you're thinking about minute details like yeah, that. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, uh, we, everyone who's played the game will, will confirm, will tell you that just the more you play it, the better it gets. Because you start mm. figuring out little tricks and things to do and, like, little optimizations. Yeah, but so anyway, so I, I finally beat that Valkyrie. And then all I had to do was collectibles, which... A bit of a ball lake, not gonna lie, but I was like, it's three was trophies. It just the raven? Oh, is it's it more? just no. So it's the ravens, the yeah. artifacts, and the treasure maps. Uh, so the ravens, the I'd maps. because I knew there was a trophy tied to it. I was very mindful from because remember I started the game like a month or two after it mm. came out. So I was very mindful of like I have to pay attention to where they were, where, where they are. Just make you drop kill them later. Yeah. yeah, and I mean I was still short like ten ravens. <laughs> so yeah, that sort of thing in games like puts me off hunting yeah. for a a platinum. Like F uh, Final Fantasy 15 didn't have anything like that. No, no, um, no, yeah. I was I was the same with you with Final Fantasy 15. I finished a game. I was like, oh, it's literally these two things. Yeah. It's like go kill this enemy, do that dungeon. Like, the other not? platinum I got was um, Horizon Zero Dawn, but and that one had a ton of collectibles. But I think what made that better was once you climbed up onto the giraffe things that are like moving towers. Mm -hmm. um, when you expose that part of the map um you get a lot of information about collectibles and then you can buy uh treasure maps that show you the exact location uh, okay. so like i was never really like i had to go around and collect them which mm. is a bit annoying but like i always knew where they were where they were the only thing that took me a bit of time was um there's a really secret um costume that you can get right at the end yeah and it requires these things called power cores and they aren't shown on the map and there's uh, only a finite like the exact amount you need is the exact amount in the game. Oh, shit. Um, so I got there and I was like, oh, sweet. I've been picking these up, you know, throughout the game. And I was like, no, you only have half of them. Oh, and I was like, oh fuck. So I had to use like Damn a guide it. to find the yeah, others. I used, I used a guide for the Ravens because yeah, no, I was point, like, I'm not going to beat my head running up and down areas. And some of them were so obscure, actually. Mm. I was like, I would never have looked there. To, like, I mean, you can hear the Ravens, but there were one or two. I was like you have to be looking at a specific spot like to know that the raven's mm. there sort of now thing. for me the 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 achievement is getting the platinum not how i get the platinum yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think we both did the thing in final fantasy where because one of the things in final fantasy 15 was you have to upgrade all your stats um uh to 10 so it was like cooking and oh uh, yeah, yeah and the one was walking <laughs> and i was yeah. like on eight or yeah. something and I, oh yeah yeah i, <laughs> I, did I took, the same I took thing, an yeah. elastic band and just wrapped it around my two thumbsticks and just left the game running for i like did the hours. exact same thing it was yeah. great, great. It, <laughs> it worked like i i'm not gonna fucking play the game for more than like another 10 hours just to yeah you know, like running no. around no no yeah but yeah so i platinum it was i mean i'd done most of the stuff anyway so it was mm. just like two or three hours extra of but it's I'd, cool that it has a lot of gameplay stuff too. Oh, yeah, which yeah. Which is really, I mean, really nice. And it was nice that it wasn't a thing of like, oh, man, I'm, I want this platinum, but I have to like go kill the Valkyries. Like, what a ball lake. I was like, I, I'm doing it anyway because I'm enjoying the game that much. Mm -hmm. So, like, why wouldn't I platinum it? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll get to it. I, the, the Raven thing really turned me off of it. Um, And then, you know, on top of it, like, I'm so far removed from God of War now that just getting up to speed again would would take yeah. time yeah it's getting used to um, the buttons and yeah i know i was so busy at the time like as soon as i finished god of war i had to move on to another game for yeah. review um but I, like because i love the game so much i would like the platinum so I'm, I'm yeah i think jealous. even even if you're not do you don't want to platinum it like at least do the sad realms fight some valkyries mm. that sort of thing i mean because it is fun like i know it's challenging but there's that sense of satisfaction when you do it you just feel so good you're like oh like i, I did it you know it was hard I've overcame this trial. And there's a Oops. there's a new game plus coming. It I think it, I think it is out already. Oh, is it is it out already? Yeah, yeah, that um, yeah. Maybe then I'll just new game plus it, and while I'm experiencing the story again, just like hunt the stuff that. Yeah, you know. I'll play it again, like a year or two. Yeah, I'm sad. Like I feel so sad platinuming 
a game though because i'm like oh like now nah, I'm, I'm really done with yeah, it like you, you know the, like you properly properly yeah done, yeah so as, as soon as i platinum it i was like okay i'm done borrow the game to a colleague that's there you go. <laughs> essentially what i did with horizon and then the the dlc came out and then i like platinum that well there was no platinum for the dlc but there was 100 percent. yeah so i did that and i was like yeah i'm, I'm pretty much <laughs> done with this game like i played this game for like 60 hours now oh man it's so good though. well speaking of horizon zero dawn i did buy it this week so i saw yes you started yeah i've, I've literally just done the intro did you get the um, one with the dlc as well yeah 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 Complete. Cool. it was 400 bucks you can, so, as far as I know, you can enact the DLC midway through your game. I would no, I'll, not. No, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to the main yeah, um, story beats. Just, just do the main thing and the, the, the DLC is like so far removed from it that you can come back to it later. Um, and also, uh, as far as I know, you can start the DLC with like a pre-made save. So it gives uh, you a okay. lot of the equipment. Okay, that's um, cool. So, yeah, it's good. The DLC is really so, good. I'm so keen to play that game. It's, it's a I, good game. I've played like the first half now and it's beautiful. I'm like, mm. shit, like God of War, I, I, I know like a lot of people have said God of War is the best looking game on PlayStation, but the, I know Horizon Zero Dawn, like before God of War was the best looking game. And I think that's still subjective because I mean, like one thing I like about Horizon Zero Dawn is that its color palette is very like, whew, it's so vivid. And yeah. Not that God of War isn't. I mean, there are sections there where it's like, wow, this is like really colorful and beautiful, but Horizon Zero Dawn just way more lush. From Horizon's what I've seen. like it, everything's just so vivid. Yeah, it's so so good. Yeah. I mean, I took and there's a camera mode which I'm so happy mm. about because <laughs> I love. I, I mean, I spend way too much time in games with camera mode, just like doing that. I'm like, oh, this is a cool shot. I'm gonna sit and tweak here for like ten minutes, and I do that very very often. Which obviously and it's got a great my, camera mode. You can change yeah. the time of day. Oh, can, can you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You can do <laughs> all is, sorts of things. That's yeah. cool. Um, Shit. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna play that next. Maybe I share some thoughts next weekend. Speaking of good camera modes, yeah. Well, what have a you? Good, been uh, a good game with a very good camera mode that I've been playing is uh, No Man's Sky. <laughs> no Man's Sky. Let me just tell you about this camera mode, though. Yeah, like, yeah. So they've added photo mode. You can be on a planet. Um, you can change <clears throat> field of view. Uh, you know, camera position. Blah blah blah. You can change the time of day. Or you can look anywhere in the sky and right-click the stick and the sun will move there. Oh, that's cool. So you can actually place your light sources yeah. exactly where you want them. No way, that's Which is cool. really, really, really nice. Um, oh, that's awesome. There's, yeah. The, I, and it feeds into the game's just new visual aesthetic. Is just mm. So if you are unaware, um, No Man's Sky came out two years ago. Mm. And since then, it's been receiving some big titled updates. I think... This is the third one. So it was Atlas Rising, um, Atlas Rising, something, something. I don't know what the second <laughs> one was. And then something, this something. one is uh, No Man's Sky Next, uh, yeah. which is like sort of like a soft relaunch of the game and the culmination of all the work that they've been doing. Mm. Um, the one thing you need to know going into this is that it's not perfect, like mm. by any stretch. Um, I'm still encountering some bugs. Some performance issues, there's still things about the game which I think are pretty stupid. Like, <clears throat> I think it's a bit obtuse at times um, for no reason. I think that um, the UI is absolutely terrible still. Um, mm. And constantly having to wonder about <coughs> uh, space in my backpack versus space in my ship and not, you know, having to be close to my ship to transfer things from one to another unless I buy a certain module. That, like, there's things in that game that they tie into game mechanics that should just be there from the start mm. to make it a better experience. Yeah. Because the game from the beginning is like a real slow burn and it's really easy to just jump off of it after like two hours and be like, nah, Not this for isn't me, for yeah. me. But the more you play, the more it starts exposing all of its new content. Like um, you have unlimited base building now. So mm. even as part of the tutorial, which is which I recommend like everyone play, the new tutorial is really good. Um, and teaches you a lot about the game that wasn't there like a year ago. Mm. So um, you can build a base anywhere on a planet, and it's sort of like a... Uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, Fortnite. Like, you know, you've got your wall panels and your, your doors and your ceilings and whatever, and then you've got this terrain, uh, terrain manipulator tool, so you can dig holes in the terrain or even build mm. other terrains. So I've seen people do some really cool shit where they... Um, 
like dig out the terrain on the side of like a cliff face and build their base on the cliff face and then build sure. stairs up to like the surface or uh, people have built bases underwater uh, uh, stuff like that it's like cool. there's loads of stuff you can do and um, there's a creative mode that gives you full freedom to do that without having to worry about resources so or having to worry about your life um, and that's really cool that mm. it's there but if you're playing the the survival portion of the game which is what I usually play um, there's a there's a story attached. The story's been in the in a previous update. The story got expanded upon, and there's more of a like a through line. Mm. Now it's not that good. Still, it's still like there's something in the universe calling you, and you just kind of like got to travel there. Like it's <laughs> it's fine. There. It's fine. It's fine. And um, uh, but you have the option of just completely ignoring it and just exploring. Um, mm. and in terms of exploring, there's even more options there. So. You, there are now very robust predefined uh, roles that you can take within uh, No Man's Sky. It's not just land on a planet. Oh, I'm going to mine shit so that I can refuel my ship so I can go somewhere else and just repeat that you cycle. Do the same thing. Yeah. Like you can set up a base and play No Man's Sky like it was Stardew Valley. Like uh, you can okay. set up farms. You don't have to go anywhere. No, you can set up farms and grow resources. You can then, if you really want to get involved, set up trade routes to mm. um, stations where you know that, oh, this plant is really valuable here or mm. stuff like that. Um, you can build a space armada if you want now because they've added the ability to uh, to own a space freighter and the freighter can house like multiple ships. Oh. So you can have multiple ships and send those multiple ships out to like different planets to do stuff for you. Or you can have your friends dock on there because there's multiplayer now. Um, and you can just like hunt bounties uh, throughout the galaxy or just be like a pirate, um, <laughs> pirate in space. Pirate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or you can just, you know, take the lonesome route and explore, land on new planets, scan new flora and fauna. Um, and you get a lot of credits for that. And, mm. you know, just kind of amass like your your currencies and your upgrades and get new ships because there's a nice cadence of like, oh, this ship is, you know, it's nice, but it's small. Oh, look, there's another ship. I've got credits. I can buy that one. It's got way more space, but I've got to, you know, work on it a bit more to get it up to scratch where yeah. I was, like stuff like that. So there's just more to do, I feel yeah. like. Um, it's still very much a game where you have to create your own fun. Mm. Um, like I said, the story's pretty bad and the um, the dialogue in there is just repeated constantly. <laughs> You'll speak to aliens like that are different races on different solar systems and they will say the same shit to you. And you're just like, okay, cool. Why? Yeah, wow. How is this possible? Um, but, you know, these are small things for a, a game that is so large and ambitious for the size, uh, the size the studio TV. that Hello Games is. Like, there's rough edges that you can kind of just go, it's fine. You know, yeah. Whatever. Um, but there's things there that I just really, really despise. Like, the UI is so bad. Um, <laughs> it's just so, like, like, you can only hold... You've got you've got a predefined set of spaces in your backpack, and each of those can only hold a stack of like two hundred and fifty of this particular resource. Mm. So as soon as I get like two hundred and fifty carbon, which is me like mining three plants, mm. now it, it takes up a separate stack. Uh, Jay And then it's like in your ship you have slots, but those stacks are now five hundred. Uh, so okay. like if I want to manually move it, I can move one stack from my backpack to a stack in my ship. But I have to manually put stacks uh, on top of on each, top other each other for them to add. It doesn't. There's no like button to be like just sort just the auto shit stack out for it, me. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just like uh, what? What was the game that I played recently that had that? There was like you clicked in a stick and it just rearranged everything. Everything. Like, I don't know. Like No Man's Sky needs that. Yeah. Because the Maybe UI is though. so so terrible and it's so obtuse. Like if you don't know. Like, you'll never figure out that your backpack actually has three components to it. It's, like, storage, technology, and utility, I think it is. And it's, like, I was I was installing upgrades in my storage bag when I had, like, four slots <laughs> open in utility that I could be... Doing like, stuff. <laughs> it's just terrible. It's, it's really annoying, and it gets in the way of playing the game because yeah. you have to... It becomes more of a chore than yeah, a chore. Yeah, it is like, a chore. Yeah. Like, I constantly have to be micromanaging my, my menus and stuff mm. like that. And then on top of that, there's just so many steps to to craft certain things so like i'll have a backpack that is full right mm. and i'll say cool i want to craft this item but i have no empty slots but i have the resources to craft this item sometimes uh, in exact amounts but i can't craft it because i don't it. have an empty slot but then i can't drop <laughs> resources 
Why? You can't drop them on the ground. I'm the only way to drop them is to destroy them. So I'm like, so I have to go back to my <laughs> ship. And if the ship doesn't have an empty slot, then I have to go back to a space station. Oh my god! Sell gosh. whatever I want, then, then craft can, what I want. Like, Jesus. no, this is bad. That's, yeah, this that's, is really that's bad. the sort of thing that should really fix. Like, it's... And, and then on top of it, it's like, you have to click an empty slot. You have to scroll through a menu to see what you want to craft. Then you have all the resources. Then you click, then it's there. And that's... That's like cool. That's already an improvement of what it was at mm. launch. But then, and then, then there's a handy, um, handy way to be like, okay, you have this in your slot. Do you want to craft more of them and just use up your resources? Like, yeah. Cool. yeah, that's fine. Um, but then some recipes are just like you have to build this thing, this thing, and then it combines. And now that you've got combined this item, you need to build this thing to combine it again. To it's like too many steps. Yeah. But even that has been improved from from launch because um, I remember having to craft. Uh, what was it? Warp cells that allow you to warp to another solar system. Mm. It was like four steps, and it was just too much. Like what? It was like, <laughs> and and it's one use. So uh, like you exactly. warp, and it's like cool. I need to just do this again and I'm again worried. and again and again. No, that's it's, uh, yeah. So I'm glad that they simplified that. They simplified a lot of their chemistry because they used to have so many different types of elements. Yeah. Uh, so now they've well, as far as I can tell, they've reduced the number, but they've added the ability to refine resources, so uh, you can okay. find copper. And then you can use this uh, portable refiner to create um, uh, refined metal. And then you can refine oh, it okay. even further. So it's more like a tiered system rather than just like Random, all yeah. of these different elements. And some some planets have some, some planets have others. You know, now it's just like planets mostly have what you need. Yeah. But you need good quantities of them to refine them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of quality of life stuff that makes the game better. That's cool. But there's still but like room still for improvements. Issues. Yeah, yeah, there's still like, it's weird because I didn't like No Man's Sky so much when it launched, but I'm mm. definitely having a better time now. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm still going, yeah, there's there's things in this game that bug me a lot. Yeah, like, it still needs um, to be fixed. It still needs to be fixed. So I'm not going to say like, oh, if you hated No Man's Sky, now you're going to love it because I don't think that's <laughs> true. Um, I still think a lot of people come into the subject and be like, this feels exactly the same while yeah. I'm still playing this. Um I do think, though, that if you own the game, you almost owe it to yourself to give this a go because mm. you could find something, and a lot of people are, are discovering this, uh, like find something that you really wanted back at the launch. Mm. And um, now it's there. And now it's there, yeah. you know. Um, and if you've never played No Man's Sky, especially if you you are able to play on PC and PS4, it's at a price now that I think is almost way worth it. It's like 250 250 bucks. rand, yeah. Yeah, like get that shit. Like... Even if you don't like it, it's that is worth the effort that was put into this game and worth mm. seeing some of the gears like turn. Like yeah. seeing the planets um randomly generate is just always nice. And landing on a planet that is gorgeous is really in itself an experience. So yeah. it's a bit harder to recommend on Xbox, but it's still full price. But uh, I is guess it still full price on Xbox. Yeah, because it's just uh, launched. But if I you know. if you only have an Xbox and you've been curious about No Man's Sky this is the launch that people wanted two years ago. So you're playing it at the best possible, possible time. Yeah. Um, Give it another two years though. And yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they, they are planning to, to carry on updating and they want to add some live service stuff to it. Mm. But there's a lot of rough shit in this game still. Um, you know, on top of all the good, there's just things there that I think are maybe almost impossible for them to fix just mm. because of the nature of the system they have. But it's a vastly improved game now. Um, there's more purpose to certain upgrades and more purpose to like what you do on a planet rather than just like scan a planet. Oh, here's a, here's a drop pod that fell. Oh, go get it. Oh, choose an upgrade from it. Just rinse and repeat that. Yeah. There seems to be more breadth in your interactions, but um, just know that this isn't a perfect game, like by any stretch. Yeah. Um, and it, it may speak to you and it may not. Yeah. Like that's I, just I don't know if I, on at a surface level I'm like I don't know if it's the sort of game I would enjoy mm. um, but I say that but I've played games like Minecraft I know, I know this may, might be a silly comparison but I've played Minecraft before and I've got lost to that game for like days mm. like mm. played till the early hours of the morning be, literally because I've like been running and exploring and like collecting resources I don't know maybe I would enjoy No Man's Sky I'm the converse I never got into Minecraft I yeah. <laughs> couldn't get into Minecraft yeah I don't know it was one of those things where it's like it's a dumb game it's a blocky game and you just mm. yeah like what is this and then I ended up buying it it's like this game is actually really really fun I do know that if you if you do want to try it 
you've got a base PS4, right? You don't have a Pro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the base PS4 version is really bad. I was like, <laughs> oh, the, no. perfor- the performance was fine, but these patches have just destroyed it. It's I was like, it. it's so bad. And and apparently on base Xbox, it's the same issue. It's because the game's so CPU heavy, yeah. because it's using its CPU to to like randomly generate all these things. Like the performance is just fucking bad. Like Terrible. even on Xbox One X, like it's t- I, I'm playing it on the most powerful console in the market now, and it's still and like, struggling. Yeah, it's like. You have two modes. You have quality and performance. <laughs> now, quality just renders this thing at 4K and it just doesn't oh my deal gosh, with yeah. it properly. And then in performance, it scales it down. Uh, and even then, I'm like, cool, I'm going to lock the frame rate at 30 because I, mm. I hate frame rates that, that jump. That jump. Off, like, yeah. I'd rather just have it locked. And even then, it like every now and then, it's just like, nah, I can't even hit 30. I'm like, what the <laughs> like, fuck? What's going on? Yeah. Like, cool. It's a good looking game, mm. but it's not God of War. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not a God of War or or like something that's more apt in comparison like a horizon zero dawn where it's open world and mm. things are happening dynamically it's just like you know why is this happening yeah, sorry, sorry to go back to god of war but the fact that i you played on a ps4 pro right mm. i played on a standard playstation and that game is like yeah, apparently it's really it's, good at it's base unreal PS4. and it runs like i don't remember any lag slow down mm. just no matter how many enemies were on screen how many effects were happening it just ran so yeah, yeah I, I don't no, know no i don't no know what sky. sorcery yeah, they, like again, they, I don't know how they do their <laughs> shit. I'm not gonna pretend to know how they do their stuff, but yeah, it's and on PC apparently you need like on PC it's better, machine. but you need a really good CPU because <laughs> it just maxes the cores. Like yeah, it burns through all of so, it. So yeah, but I I mean I would if you do hop in on PC seems like a no brainer because you can play at 60 frames and whatever. Um, but yeah, if you're on base Xbox or PS4, just be warned that it's a rough. It's rough as fuck. And on my PS4 Pro, I've never heard my console that loud. <laughs> the fans just go into overdrive, which is fine. Like, I'd rather that happen than the thing just melt. But, like, I've never in my life heard the PS4 make the noises just, it does. Just imagine your PS4 having a voice like, help. <laughs> help me. It's actually part of a, it's, it's the features. You need to hear your spaceship taking off. So the PS4 oh, mimics it's okay. it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, the this Xbox game's so laugh way like. quieter, but yeah, the PS4 one is like, <laughs> oh my god, this is kind of bad. I don't know. I've never, sorry to to touch on that. I've never noticed my PlayStation being noisy. I don't know if it's because I'm just not mindful of it, or if I've not played like No Man's Sky. But with God of War, there were moments I'm I'm aware that the fans loud, but it's never been like, yeah, like that. I feel mm. it's gonna fall over and die sort of i thing. must admit my pro has been way louder than what i remember my base one really being as well yeah and it was a thing that a lot of people complained about when it first launched they're like this console is fucking loud yeah it's like yeah it is, <laughs> it is. yeah it, it's annoying it, it really bugs me it, it reminds me of um at the end of last generation i had my 360 and my ps3 my ps3 was whisper quiet oh, yeah? and my 360 was, was like, an nee. old it was a white one it didn't even have hdmi oh, no. it's fucking old it didn't have hdmi out. no it only had Jeez. components it was <laughs> avian component because the hdmi out only came with the wow. slim black one that's amazing. and um that well, thing made so to be much alive. noise <laughs> my god it made so much noise Jeez, it was like... irritating to have on like, yeah yeah that's why you put headphones on full volume yeah. <laughs> Jesus. but that's what my pro reminds me of so that's Jeez, not like, a not a great comparison um that's no man's Sky. that's no man's sky uh let me quickly touch on what else did i play on what else did i play uh, oh destiny yeah yeah yeah. destiny so i hopped into destiny very quickly yesterday i haven't played in months but uh these two these two dorks that work with me uh darren brontes and Kevin. Oh, but, does Kevin but, also play Destiny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kevin was Kevin was super into Warframe, um, oh. and he's finally given Destiny a go, and he's he's hooked. Oh my word! So they they've been chatting about it in Slack and whatever, <clears throat> and um, I've been meaning to get back into it before Forsaken launches next month. Mm. Um, but I was always like, oh man, then I have to buy the Warmind DLC, yeah. whatever. So I logged in yesterday. I was just whatever. Turns out I had bought that deal. <laughs> I don't even. I must have when Do you know that when I was playing pass, it. Maybe, I, I think or? I bought the season pass. Uh, I thought I bought just the Curse of Osiris expansion. Okay. Turns out I bought the season pass. So I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So I've well, got all this nice, content. Yeah. That's nice. So I played one or two story missions. They were fine. Um, it was really annoying that the DLC takes place on a brand new planet. You play mm. one mission. It's like, oh, cool. We need to go back to that planet you spent forty hours on already. It's like, uh, but this is we, a brand new area. Let's just yeah. stay here. Like, I'm yeah. 
Um, but loads of new weapons. Um, one of my favorite weapons, the... Um, no, I've gone blank. Um, it's a pulse rifle. Pew, it's a, it's a, rare, it's it's a, a legendary pew, pew pulse weapon. rifle. People know. Uh, Graviton Lance, that's the one. Yeah. Um, they changed that heavily in the Warmind expansion, so now it's like my favorite weapon of well, all time. It's what makes so, it special? It's so it, a, it, was a, it was a pulse rifle, so it used to be three burst. Yeah. They changed it to two burst. Yeah. And they made the second shot do way more damage. Uh, so okay. now it almost feels like an automatic shotgun. Oh, that's that can cool. shoot long range. Oh wow! <laughs> so I can put people in the head from like miles out, but the the impact is like I can see it. Like the first hit maybe takes a third of their health, and the second yeah. one just kills them. Like, that's straight awesome. Away. I'm like, <laughs> fuck yes! I'm, you're powerful. And then and then when you kill someone with the gun, uh, it causes their bodies to explode, <laughs> and the projectiles then do damage to people <clears throat> around them. So it's almost like. Like at some points, I was like, "What is going on? Are these enemies just throwing grenades everywhere?" Yeah. And it's like, "No, it's just it's your weapon." Yeah, it's my <laughs> weapon just turning them into grenades, and it was just a good oh, time. Yeah, that's just, cool. So, I had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of content there that I've never seen. There's like an event going on called Solstice of something or Solace of something, where you replay old missions and Qu- Quantum of Solace. Quantum of so Solace. Sol- yeah, James Bond movie. <laughs> yes, uh, Pierce Brosnan. No, I'm kidding. Worst, ah. worst movie. James Bond's fans are like, it's not Pierce Brosnan, you fool. It's <laughs> Daniel Craig. Da- Daniel Craig. <laughs> Sean Connery. Oh, man. Best, best Bond. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Timothy what? Dalton. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting into this now. <laughs> Carry on with Destiny before I have, I have to resist the urge to throw something at <laughs> you. Um, yeah, there's just like loads of cool content in there that uh, is kind of like sucking me back in. And... Uh, the gameplay is just fucking great. Like, yeah, Destiny that's just cool. feels so good. So I'll play a bit more. Maybe I'll buy Forsaken um, and see what happens there. But uh, Wouldn't you have it you if know. you bought the season pass? No, Forsaken's, uh, Forsaken's a brand new thing. Oh, man. It's like the Taken you. King. It's like going to uh, reinvent Destiny Reinvent two, the game. Um, but yeah. like, I'm pretty sad because I want to do some of the new raids. But like, mm. none of the group that I was playing with like plays anymore just so gotta play like, with Darren man yeah Darren. I play the raid the raid layers with Darren I guess doesn't Glenn have Destiny mm. as well or, or yeah I mean all those guys Glenn, Craig all of our our close friends for anyone who doesn't know they I mean that's who I was playing with that's who I completed the raid with when it first uh, came out right. but they've all fallen off they all play Fortnite now Fork now Fork now yeah what a game, yeah. okay. what a game. <laughs> anyway that's <sighs> a quick check in on yeah, Destiny it's a good game Destiny's the sort of game I know I'd enjoy I mean to me, it's I love Borderlands, and I, and oh, I hope you understand so what, what the comparison is. There. It's like there's something similar about the two of them, and I'm just like, it's just that loot grind. You're yeah, just like yeah, want, that's it. It's, a, it's a loot grind. But numbers, destiny. There's something about it, I'm just like, man, like I can't get excited. But I don't know what it is. Mm. I, but it's a thing is where I know if I played, I'm like, oh, like this game. I rate if we played on PC together. Yeah, we'd, we'd have a good time. Yeah, um, maybe when it's on sale. I wish, I wish I could transfer my character from console to PC. Because now I've got it on PC. How is that not a thing? Yeah. Today. Like, I, I've like got that it on I PC and it's just like, no, nah, you need to play through the story again. I mean, like, the, the, like oh, that I don't understand. No. I, like cross play is one, one argument, like whatever. But I'm like, how in 2018 do we not have the ability? It's like, I've got your game on two platforms. How mm. do I not have the ability to take one from one to the other? Like it doesn't it's, make any sense. And I think, it, again, it comes down to this whole idea of, microtransactions and dlc oh, it's like still it's like you're buying you're buying um engrams or whatever on playstation and playstation's taking a cut and they don't want you bringing content that you bought on pc to its platform yeah. and i mean that's i guess the same for xbox but this seems more like an activision thing yeah because you know if it was a console thing like then maybe it would only be the case on sony mm. but it, it doesn't no, exist no, it doesn't anyway. exist so but it's yeah. really annoying. Maybe Activision is just like, hey, they'll just buy it again. But like, <laughs> they'll I just play the game again. Take my cosmetic shit away. Just give me the ability to like just not have to carry play stuff another forty over. hours. Yeah. Like, and come on, like you do want to play the game more, but you don't want to play it forty hours more from the beginning. Yeah, it's it it's super annoying. But. It's like imagine imagine you you play Hearthstone you, you play on PC and then you, you're like, hey, Hearthstone's out on my phone now, and they're like. Sorry, you cannot pay your accounts. You have to, you know, grind out other cards. Yeah. And it's like, but wow. Isn't it make any sense. Isn't there a Hearthstone expansion? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's out yet. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, are we, are we going straight to news? Are we not doing game game releases? No, no, that's what I'm doing. Oh, Upcoming you're getting game, games. You're skipping through to Hearthstone news. Jumping the gun there. Uh, 
I need to see game releases. Let's see. Let's see. Wasn't this week meant to be like a really good week? Yes, this week is. I do know that that Overcooked Two is coming out this week. Wait, is Overcooked Two this week? Yes, that next week. (gasps) So yeah, that's that's a big one. Overcooked Two is out on the eighth of August, which is Tuesday. Round up your loved ones and your friends so you can end all ties with them. Yeah. (laughs) Literally. If you're looking for, for a reason, if you're in a bad relationship and you're looking for an excuse to end it, like a, a peaceful way, then get overcooked too. No, overcooked overcooked <laughs> is a good is a good way to test if um you are in a long standing relationship or not. Like if you wanna if you don't want to speak to your family again, this is another good way. Yeah. Just <laughs> burn burn bridges, look no further. Uh so overcooked I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, it's like a co op party game. Yeah. party maybe <laughs> um you basically have a bunch of challenges uh like where you go into a kitchen and you you get orders and you have to fill those orders like uh, make a burger so you have to like fry the meat get the lettuce put the tomato on whatever sometimes someone will be stupid and not want tomato on their burger yeah um, you know you'd customize orders and then you then you but get a darren <laughs> who doesn't have any lettuce you just <gasps> put some patty on that monster but uh what's cool about the game is that it each of the kitchens has like a, a twist to it. Like it's not really kitchens. It, the yeah, it's the, not really the kitchens. opening levels like a kitchen. The rest of them aren't kitchens. There's that really. one that bugged me a lot in the first one where it was like a kitchen that was halved between two like two tucks. cars. Yes. Oh my gosh, that level. And it would always like split and then remerge and split. It was a fu- <laughs> who is eating at that restaurant? <laughs> how is that food being delivered? How, are you, how are you eating on a highway? Like where are the patrons? Like and it's like and it's like they want their food on time. Like where the fuck is this food going? They took fast food a little too literally. There's one there's one that is set in like Antarctica. Yeah. Oh, and, I remember. And in oh, hell, you, or like on the sun. <laughs> the one in Antarctica, I think you like slid around when you ran or something it like that. It was the worst. You just, <laughs> you just slipped everywhere. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. There's one Trying near to get the those end dishes where in. The, the kitchen is actually, you're playing in like lava, I think it is. Yeah. And all your stoves are on this rotating thing. Oh no. So you have to prepare <gasps> the stuff, put the stove on, put it on this thing, and then make sure that it has enough time to get around. Oh my and not word. start burning like halfway through the rotation. Shit. That game is hectic. <coughs> it gets in intense. Although like. in, in Overcooked too, you can throw items now apparently, which is a yeah. That would that would have been a nice feature I'm on that highway level. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw tomatoes at people when you're angry. <laughs> like, oh, what is it? Is so. yeah. <laughs> um, get out of my kitchen. Overcooked is great. It's out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. This is the second one uh, on August seventh. Also on August 7th is H1Z1 Battle Royale. It's coming out of Oh my Access. gosh. Um, oh, I was going to say, wasn't it? The radio Battle yeah, Royale? If you need another Battle Royale in your there life. There are so many on the market. There's also a game called Hyper Universe coming to Xbox One. Not sure what that is. Um, not hyped for it? What? Are you not hyped for it? Hype, Hype. Hyped for Hyper Universe? Hyped Universe. No, not really. <laughs> um, also on the 7th, yes, the 7th of August is... It's D-Day. j uh, 7th of August is also Hearthstone the, the oh, is Boomsday that, Project the Boomsday Project I didn't realize it was, that's PCM this week level. yeah I haven't played Hearthstone saw, for months I saw a headline going around about some card that looked insane like that looked uh, absolutely I haven't, crazy I haven't touched Hearthstone for a long time yeah me neither which which is funny because another colleague at my office started playing Hearthstone I was like oh my god I'm so proud now I've got to start playing the game again so I can teach him teach uh, him the ways yeah I'd, yeah, I, I mean, I played it when it was out, and but I was never good at drafting. Yeah, no, no, no. I just had fun collecting cards and yeah, shit. Um, also on August seventh, big one for me: Dead Cells. Dead Cells. <gasps> PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. I don't know if I, I want to play it, but I don't know if I can play something like that straight after Hollow Knight. I've already picked it up because it's like twenty percent oh off for gosh. pre-order. I fucking wait. cannot wait for this. I'll game. wait. So if you here's a quick, brief dis- description of it. It's a metroidvania roguelike hmm. um where you have some permanent upgrades that you can enact after each run hmm. um your weapons change after each run so it oh. has a nice variety like forcing you to adapt to, to hmm. new circumstances but everyone who's played the game in early access because it's been in early access for like a year is just like really enamored with the level design and the um the combat is especially good apparently yeah and then it's just got this great 2D art style. So oh, yeah, it looks, very excited. How much was it? 20% 260 off. bucks. Well, 20% off, so mm-hmm. normally about like 300 bucks. Yeah. That's fine. I'll wait. 
I will so, wait. I, I don't see PC listed here. It definitely is coming sure to PC, PC because it's out on early access on PC right yeah. now. So, yeah, I'm super stoked for that. Death Flipping sense. death. Flipping death. Flipping death. What a South if African this game, isn't a skating hey? game. <laughs> if this isn't a South African skating game, Wait, flipping so hell, man. Flipping death. The new game from Zoink. <laughs> it's a Scooby Doo game. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> um. Oh wait, no. Scooby Doo. Yeah, like it a is. Point and click adventure. This is oh. so not what I thought it would be. <laughs> Oh, wait. Help ghosts with their curious problems while also solving the mystery surrounding your own demise in this new puzzling adventure. Flip the entire world with the press of a button. Possess the living and use them to solve puzzles. Uh, spiritual successor to our well-received game, Stick It to the Man. I never played that. <laughs> they use the word spiritual success on, per- on purpose. The, the phrase. Oh, crap, uh, get it? Get it? Test. Spiritual successor? Oh, oh, ghosts. Oh, 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 boo! Uh, Whoever copyrighted that, I appreciate you. <laughs> you understand the struggle. I understand the struggle and the, and the genius behind that. Um, so that's out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Slamland? Slamland. Wrestling game has to be. <laughs> I'm not even going to lock it up. Has to be a wrestling game. Slamland. Slamland. Um, also out on August 7th, PC, PS4, and Switch. Then, August 9th, Okami HD is finally coming to Switch. Again. Very well, excited. Not again to Switch. I've never but... played Okami. I played it on Wii and I loved it. I played like three hours and I just never picked it up again. I don't know why. It's I like also a Z- loved Zelda like, right? Uh, yeah, and it's puppet. beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I don't know how to although on the Wii Yeah, on the Switch it'll be fine because there was there was painting involved. From, oh. I, I I can't remember the game that well. So don't, don't take it's got my a really word good for art it. style. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. I'd I'd be keen to actually. So you know you know like you know like in uh, Ocarina of Time when you jump and attack, yeah, yeah. Link does the whole Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Uh, what does this one does do? Does this one go bluff? <laughs> bluff. Bluff. <laughs> bluff. <laughs> woof. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I, I can't remember. It was long ago. I played on the Wii. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is my age showing. My memory fails me. I just okay. know it was gorgeous. Okay. I, I mean, I'm immediately down <laughs> when it's got the structure of Zelda. I'm just to stoked. Just to backtrack, but you wouldn't look up Slam Land, but I did. What it's, is it? It's made by a studio called Bread Machine Games. Bread Machine Games. <laughs> and there's no description so carry on (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay august 9th monster hunter world on pc oh that's cool very cool um i'm glad more people get to play that game because it's really good um also august 9th gladibots steam early access don't know what that is um august 10th madden nfl 19 pc ps4 xbox one uh, I like Madden games. Um, Madden Amer- 19. American football America. is something I would never watch in person, maybe, because I've heard it just takes forever. But it's fun to play. I mean, I learned how the rules work from playing it uh, yeah. on video games. And I have a friend who's really into them, so they fun. They fun video games. <clears throat> um, game called Terra Tech, coming to PC, Xbox One, and PS4 on August 10th. Um not sure what that is. Slam Land. So I'm still I'm you, still, still enamored on Slam with Slamland. <laughs> I think if if I'm not wrong, it's a co-op game involving, where you wrestle in, <laughs> involving basketball. Do you slam each other? There we go. Let's see. I'm watching the trailer right now. Is it's it like super. It's like Super Smash Bros. Almost. Oh, it's like a platform fighter. Yeah. Dunk your friends. <laughs> Holy shit. Dunk your friends. Okay, another platform so fighter. That's it's like bold. a. It's like a. <laughs> okay okay I, I, I was just curious it's it's a it looks like a super smash bros something but, but you, you, s- you, you your slam friends. dunk your friends is the the catch line slam and your friends <laughs> slam your oh that sounds that sounds dodgy <laughs> yeah that does sound pretty good slam your friends oh <laughs> um out on august 10th tiny hands adventure is this a <laughs> donald trump simulator <laughs> why would you call your game tiny hands adventure <laughs> tiny hands adventure <laughs> oh my gosh I, I want to, me that's in my next it. life. I want to come back as a, as the dude who just writes names of games, who comes up with them. Like your whole job Ta- is to make bad game tiny, titles. Tiny hands simulator. <coughs> tiny hands. Is it a is it a Donald Trump game? Fuck it, it Jesus! I, it? I buy a demeaning. Oh, you play as a T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> that's close, close enough. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. 
join young T-Rex Borty on his... Borty. Wow. Tiny uh, on his quest to find the best replacement for his tiny hands Oh my and gosh. Arms. The, whole pre- the whole premise is literally... <laughs> So when you finish the game, <coughs> oh god, it's not tiny hands anymore. It's big hand simulator. Oh, Jesus, oh, wow, that was good. I'm so glad I looked at that. Um, <laughs> tiny hand simulator. <laughs> so that's out on PC and Switch. Uh, and then the final big game for the week is We Happy Few. Oh, out on PS4, P- PC, and Xbox One. Um, we Happy Few. I'm curious. I'm very curious. Um, I'm going to be reviewing it for. No, oh, interesting. For GameSpot. You're tell um, us about it next week. I played it in early access and it was super weird. Yeah, I remember um, you. It you feels like you played it long ago. I played it very ago. long ago. Holy moly. Um, very, very long ago. Uh, I even played a build before early access really? was a thing Jeez on like. Xbox. Like, And that was fucking bare bones. Like, there was <laughs> nothing so, there. So I'm curious to see how the game is um, now. Yeah, I, I'm curious because like the main thing that I found with the game was there was no purpose to the whole like roguelike structure to it. Yeah, you're just um, doing your thing. But it seems like there's a more structured take on like, there's three characters, each with their individual stories. Uh, and you okay. have to escape the town of um, oh, okay. that sounds happy interesting. whatever. Uh, Have we happy few? I'm keen to play. Yeah, yeah. I'm keen to see and hear your thoughts. On them. That's a lot of games for one week. Uh, yeah, gaming. Uh, we are definitely getting to busy time. The busy time again. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just looking at the week after, and it's just oh like, no, don't so even. Many. There's so many, so many of the things. Okay, we go to gaming uh, news. We we have to, we have to fly through gaming. News. There's not much gaming news <laughs> as far as let's like, let's do like a handful of, of uh, all the the hot hits of this week. A hot hot hits. Let me actually go. By hot hits, I don't mean music. I mean actual <laughs> gaming news. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What 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 big articles did you write this week? I don't particularly think I wrote any big ones. Like I can't, off the top of my head, think of something that's big. No um, big scandal. Okay, here's some here's some small rapid ones for you. Dragon Ball Fighter Z Switch open beta starting next week. Wow. Tenth to twelfth of August. Uh, <laughs> this tagline's really good. Go on, give it a try. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh, my kidney just exploded. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Bioware uh, came out and said that they are definitely going to be still working on something along the lines of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Mm. Uh, Casey Hudson updated, uh, gave an update via a personal blog on uh, the studio's website saying that Anthem was doing pretty well and, you know, all hands on deck there. But, but that they've heard done, yeah. the fan feedback. They're like, yes, we still want to make single-player mm. RPG content. Um, they spoke about the Old Republic getting some new content mm. soon. Um, I'm pretty sure... I mean, we've heard for a long time now um, that a new Dragon Age is being developed. <laughs> Dragon Age Online. <clears throat> yeah. I, th- <laughs> I think at this point, like, any... Any RPG that they they bring out will have some sort of like live Online, functionality, yeah. but I don't necessarily think it will mean that it's like a MMO, an MMO, yeah. yeah. Like a, a Dragon Age or a Mass Effect could benefit from having like weekly, oh yeah, weekly content updates or mm. stuff like that. But I don't think it's like oh now it's a four player game. You don't want a Mass Effect MMO. I wouldn't mind a, a Mass Effect <laughs> where it's all co op, but I think that it you struggle to make a cohesive story. Yeah, like I don't know how that will work. Um, but yeah, I'm. I still haven't played Andromeda, but I know a lot of people didn't play. Well, didn't like it. Yeah, I, th- I think that game. Like, I haven't played it, so I'm, I don't have a, an informed opinion. Mm. But I've heard both sides where people are like, yeah, there were problems, but it's not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. Which I think, yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, Mass Effect had such a high bar. Yeah. So it's hard to hit that. Um, Again, the tagline on this is something to take solace in. Mm. Like uh, Octopath Traveler sold over 1 million copies worldwide. Which makes Very me cool. so happy. <sighs> Very cool. Uh, you I, haven't played that yet? No, right? I think I might pick it up after <coughs> Hollow Knight. I'll we'll see. Okay. I will see. I'm, I'm committing to all these long games now. <laughs> like, just finished God of War. I'm going to play Horizon Zero Dawn. Still busy with Hollow Knight, which is not a short no, Metroidvania game. Was, it's, Hollow Knight was I've played. My, my switch timer says 15 hours. I'm like, shit. I'm not even like halfway through <laughs> through the game. What is this? Um, Let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Spyro the Reignited Trilogy is coming out next month. Hooray. Um, just be sure you have a good internet connection because only the first game's on the disc. What? <laughs> why? Yeah. Why would um, they do they that? They didn't really say uh, why, 
but That's weird. my my guess is that the games weren't entirely ready for handing over to the printing uh, okay uh you know printing yeah, just yeah. printing people that's so um, weird though yeah. you buy, it, buy a hard there's copy. a lot of there's a lot of speculation that the other two <laughs> games will be tied to a code in the box so it uh, diminishes the resale value of it i don't think that will be the case but yeah fuck, who knows we'll see that's, um yeah but yeah that's out next month i'm very excited for that i like spyro a lot and i haven't even played the crash remake oh it's so good i know oh, so i need good. to pick it up on switch um oh valve's releasing a game hmm artifact card yeah, game that card game wow a uh, big thing is that it's not free to play it's not no it's 20 dollars. what uh-huh valve volvo why are you do <laughs> why are you doing this so it's out on november 28th <coughs> um, so it has a release date Jayzak. yeah what year is it artifact will mix features from dota 2 with those of a traditional trading card game uh dota 2 will be able to control well, like in Dota 2, players will be able to control three lanes of action at the same time, and there will be some familiar faces in the forms of heroes and creeps. I wonder, because it's not free to play, if they're going to just have that game and it becomes like Dota 2 and that they just add content to it, mm. or if it's going to be like, cool, here's Artifact, but then like a year later, like here's the expansion, $10 or... I think it will okay. adopt a Hearthstone format. I think Reckon. I think Hearthstone got out the gate as like a free to play and Hearthstone is free to play, but... Mm. For all intents and purposes, now you can't play Hearthstone as a free to play anymore. Yeah, you can, but you'll just get <coughs> low yeah, down. You, you, you have to buy the the expansion pack. Yeah. So, I think Valve was just like, "Cool, we'll do the same, but we'll charge from the get go." Yeah, which no, don't get me which wrong, helps this, give yeah. the impression. I think that's where Hearthstone's struggling is like people are like I can't play this game as a free to play mm. game anymore, and that's only a a a problem because that's how the first six months to a year everyone mm. was playing that game. Yeah. If you start with the intention that it's twenty dollars, like yeah, I, I, there's actually nothing wrong with Valve charging. <coughs> I mean, <clears throat> most, sorry, my knee jerk reaction is like, how is it not free to play? But when I think about it, twenty dollars isn't that bad. Mm -mm, no. um, and if you think about Hearts and every expansion that comes out, if you want fifty pa fifty card packs, it's normally like forty dollars. Yeah. So jeez, <laughs> it's a lot of cash monies. Um, what else is interesting? Oh, Elon Musk said he wants to put video games in Teslas. Cool. What? Just another <laughs> screen to play Doom on. <clears throat> wow, it feels like Elon Musk just wants to be in everything now. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Elon. Um, Old Elon. Oh, yeah, we've got uh, Games for Gold and PS Plus stuff to talk about. Ah. No, wait, Games for Gold we spoke about last week, I think. Yeah, but PS Plus, PS Plus was, was this week. So, if you're on PS4... You get the once exciting, pretty standard, and sadly pretty mediocre game Mafia Three. Mafia Three. And what is that? Mafia Three is fine. Like, yeah. it's okay. I've I've heard both sides of the fence. People are like I love it, and people are like no, it's the it's best really part bad. of the game is like its story, and mm. especially the first opening like three hours are yeah, fucking great. Really good. But the the gameplay is so repetitive and monotonous, uh. like. It loses that luster, but yeah. it's, it's still worth the play, I think. Um, Mafia 3. There's I'm also sad. Dead by Daylight, with, which is an That's asymmetrical... A, yeah, cop, horror, something, something. In which a team of survivors must fend off murderous advances of a persistent psychopath. Sounds cool. Yeah, I think and I think it, it takes those psychopaths are like uh, figures from horror movies. Oh, it could be oh, like, like I'm sure, Jason? like yeah, like I think Jay. I, I don't know about Jason, but I don't know Freddy's there. Okay. I think. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I remember seeing like glimpses of the trailer. And I think I did spot Freddy. So I don't know if that's like a, you know, a limited DLC special something something, or if it's you know here's all the horror figures from different movies and franchises, and you have to survive. Okay. Um. There's also Bound by Flame on PS3. Didn't you play that? Mm -mm. or do you, no, you played I, something in the flood uh F flood, flood in, the, in flame. the flame yeah okay so those are no. different um yeah so then I'm not sure flood in also the on flame. ps3 is serious sam's serious sam 3 bfe yes it has been years since i've played a serious sam they're busy making another one eh another one oh mm -hmm. interesting i wonder do you think that that sort of serious sam is the one where it's just like mobs of enemies <clears throat> and it's crazy uh, yeah it's a, it's like a twitch Shoot it sort of like um, Doom. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it's literally just hordes upon hordes of enemies. Yes. Do you I think, think so. that sort of game still has like a, an audience today? I don't know so much. Like, um, 
I think that's what everyone was asking about Doom. Yeah. Um, and then, oh. and then, <laughs> then worrying, the guy like, Doom did. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess they were worrying. They're like, well, if Doom becomes a corridor shooter, then it's just not the same as yeah. well. And Doom found this like really good middle ground. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know. know. I think it's much harder. Yeah. Because I think people expect a different type of design from shooters now. Mm. So um, you were saying sure. that Dead by Daylight has iconic horror figures. And I'm just seeing a headline here that they added Leatherface from texas oh, okay. chainsaw massacre so then so. it is yeah so i'm not speaking shit Hooray. no definitely not um <laughs> at least not this time then there is on vita you get draw slasher as well as space hulk uh you also get some games on psvr like the psychological horror here they lie which i've heard isn't very good <laughs> um and a playlink trivia game called knowledge is power which i've also heard is not pretty good is- it's um, pretty good or not good? Not pretty good. Oh. <laughs> a lot of the PlayLink stuff has not had the same impact. Not pretty impact. good. Like, you know, at, at, at that point, like, PlayLink needs to be better than Jackbox Party Pack. Yeah, yeah. And Jackbox Party Pack is fucking awesome. I still need to play that. Um, Jackbox. So yeah. <coughs> That's your PS Plus stuff? Sorry, I'm coughing so much. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> there's, there's some dust in You know what it is? It's all them August winds. Yeah. Kicking up all the dust in Joburg. Um. Oh, we do have updates on... Game, uh, games that are being added to Xbox Game Pass. Oh, yes. Which is the subscription service. And it's a good month. Um, in July, we got Fallout 3 and Elder Scrolls and Vermintide 2, which is a fucking awesome game. Uh, but in August, you are getting a bunch of games, which will include the launch title Rise, as well as Dead Rising 2. But the biggest one, in my view, is Hitman's Complete First Season. Oh. Which is awesome because I've been wanting you, to yeah. play that game for a while and darren darren rejoices like darren finally adores that game finally more people will play this masterpiece and just in time for the sequel coming out in november oh is that out in november mm-hmm. and, and this time it's not episode at all and again episode. again darren's like finally mm. more more of this game that i love so much um any more game oh games? there was a there was a steam game this week accused of turning pcs into cryptocurrency miners. <laughs> uh, again it feels yeah. like Feels like that's not the first case. The first time it was like this very crudely drawn like uh, platformer, and it didn't take long for people to start looking at this game that wasn't like graphically intensive and be like, "Why Why the fuck is my GPU being like maxed out? Like, why is my 1080 Ti running at 100 percent?" And the developers are like, "No, it's just a demanding game." (laughs) No, it's It's physics based. It's just doing calculations. So Steam, uh, Steam removed the game. Apparently, the studio is also scamming people using trading cards or not trading cards um items they were basically yeah. giving like this team fortress 2 drop which yeah. was actually fake it just had the the artwork of this item but actually did nothing in the game <laughs> so yeah what a time to be <laughs> yeah maybe that if steam so you know fucking oh curated their games a bit better that is like, so funny so i uh, just imagine playing that game <clears throat> you open up like a loot box or something and you get an item like yeah what does it do nothing <laughs> like it's nothing. just a jpeg <laughs> oh my gosh what am i gonna do with this uh, uh yeah god steam has created this problem for itself like, yeah 100 really um like letting a game that is literally stealing from people <laughs> and turning their pcs into cryptocurrency machines like fuck yeah i don't know like what the, they're thinking like it, it it only takes one person there to play the game and be like huh something's not yeah, right, something's here. right here. <laughs> yeah like oh, Jesus just hire Christ. more people steam game okay, more 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 curators <clears throat> um then we've got donut county got a release date it's out you, you were telling me about August. this game before we yeah. started recording to tell the audience about so this, donut county is this, this indie game that looks very very cool donut you county. control a well you control a hole in the ground. <laughs> that hole is actually being remote controlled by a raccoon. This um, is the best premise for a game. And I've basically, heard. it's just like a physics puzzler game where you have to like get things to fall in this hole and fall in specific ways. So you can interact with the environment in specific ways. Um, but I just really like that the game opens up with basically the world destroyed because everything's fallen into <laughs> this hole. And like humans sitting around a fire with this raccoon and them going, Why the fuck did you do this? <laughs> And it's just so funny. Like, the writing in it looks so good. Oh, my gosh. That um, sounds awesome. I'm very excited. It's coming to PS4, mm. PC, and iOS. Not Switch. But not Switch. Oh, it's on iOS even. Very, very sad, yes. I'm going to fidget spin um, because, because it's not on Switch. 
Is that is what that if, how, how you memorialize can... games not on Switch? You just you, fidget spin. Can you guys hear me fidget spinning? It's a very annoying sound. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Split Cell Blacklist and Double Agent are backwards compatible on Xbox One. That's cool because they're very good games. Um, the Nintendo Switch is almost at 20 million consoles. 20 million? Jeez, like, what is, is their, crazy. what is their target for 2018? God, wasn't it like 30 or 40 million, something like that? Yeah, but po- they still have Pokemon to come. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But we still have Pokemon and Smash. That's true. And, Smash. And, and, and like, even if they don't hit 30, 40 million, 20 million already in a year and a half is like, wow. Yeah. That's, the Switch did not flop. Like no, the definitely. Wii U. Not at all, like which is great. It's so. already over double what the Wii U sold. Yeah, like. so hooray for Nintendo. Yeah. And uh, what's interesting is that the top selling games, well, the top selling game at the moment is Mario Odyssey. Uh, Still? Yeah, I, see. I think it's Mario Odyssey, then Mario Zelda. Kart, then <laughs> Zelda. Um, let me just double check here. All Nintendo titles. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze has sold 1.4 million copies. Mario Tennis Ace is up to 1.4 almost. Jeez, um yeah basically nintendo's doing all right i can't that's see that's good the, the that's fine yet. i'll take the your 3DS word for it is also like well the ds is like in the top five best selling consoles ever made and the 3ds still continues to sell it's sold Jeez, another like, 360 thousand units shit, and uh, that console's like old games. now it's that's why the support's not stopping for that game. Yeah, like, it's still uh, for, for that console. Like, why? Why, <laughs> why not? Um, I think that's it. Let me just double check. Oh, someone built a a giant Sean Murray face on a planet surface in the <laughs> sky and is visible from space. <laughs> that's cool. Um, oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's about it. A... Okay, that's gaming news. Gaming news. No scandals news this week. From the games. games. <laughs> In yes. case you needed an explanation on what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Here's one other thing. The Portal 2 co-writer, Jay Pinkerton, oh, uh, got back, rehired at Valve. Back so, at Volvo. Hooray. Portal 3 confirmed! Um, well, There's your a, drama. <laughs> well, drama. I think the only drama is, is spawning from <coughs> the fact that you're spreading lies on our podcast. It's not a lie but, if it eventually <laughs> happens. <laughs> but eventually, 40 years down the line exactly where's portal 3 it's not a laugh it hasn't happened i mean it hasn't been not confirmed well Boom. that's that's what they said about this is fucking journalism <laughs> this is what they said about half life three didn't they i mean yeah. exactly i mean it hasn't been cancelled oh man <laughs> half life three okay half life three okay we've got some a bunch of questions We've got many, many questions from Megs, which we'll fly through. <clears throat> Although, wait, he starts I appreciate off... your enthusiasm, but... Um... That is a lot. Oh, wait, I just want to touch on... So last <clears throat> week, he asked about Games Pass. Did he? Um, Didn't we answer that? No, we, we did, but he, he ended up messaging... Because we were like, yeah, Games Pass is worth it. Oh, okay. But he doesn't have an Xbox. He's talking about Games oh. Pass on PC. Oh, which apparently means, there is a way to do that. No, but which means he only has, like, State of Decay and... Um, uh, only the Xbox yeah, only the Xbox uh, games. Yeah, Which then makes it a bit it. yeah less worth it. <clears throat> so I hope that answers your question. I think it's not as worth it. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Um, so his first question is, why do people find games with procedurally generated levels fun? Doesn't it mean it has no true end, such as the end? So what, the game doesn't end, I guess? Um, I, I wonder, is he referring to games like Diablo, I presume? Or, Diablo, No Man's Sky to an extent. Yeah. Um, I think... Like I think that comes down to what you what you want out of game. Like <clears throat> if you want a very strict start and end to a game, then yes, yeah. that's a problem. Um but a lot of people, myself included, for me the journey is more important. Um for me, I've had I've had great times with games that I haven't finished, like Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm. Um that, you know, I didn't need an end to enjoy that game. Um but procedurally generated things like I think people like coming back to a game and being consistently surprised. Surprised, yeah. And I think that's why procedurally generated games work the way they do. I don't think it works in every sort of genre and it shouldn't be like strict level design has its place as well, but I don't know, like coming back to a game that you haven't played for a year and it suddenly feels like a new game, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> I mean that's 
uh, the Resident Evil 1 remake. Mm. So it's, that's not a procedurally generated, but there is a mode in that game, if I'm not mistaken, where everything in the house is randomized. Okay. It's purely just so, because when you play a game like that, it's repeatedly, you know exactly where to find that item or that herb, whatever. So this just makes the game feel different. Oh, and the enemy's mm. placements are different, obviously. And um, also, procedurally generated doesn't mean there's no end. Like, yeah. Look at one of the best procedural... Uh, games on the planet Splunky it has a defined end Splunky like your runs have ends but each run is different yeah so that's why people still today will log on every single day to play the game to get a a daily run in like that's cool because that's fun I mean yeah it just takes away from that static boringness I guess like you say if you don't want an if you you want an end to a game then there are games like that but yeah (laughs) it's 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 just different and and like anything there's good procedural generation and there's bad um and the good is really good and the bad just it doesn't justify its need yeah yeah okay Mm. next question from Megs. will you guys be at rage 2018 a checkpoint chat meetup uh Uh, i don't know actually if i'll be at rage i I, I didn't go last year last year is the first year in many years i haven't been here i don't know because uh comic con's happening um comic con africa is happening at the end of September, and I'm definitely going to that. Um, Do you think I don't know overlap about with Rage. Rage. I like. I haven't really felt the need to go to Rage in a long time. Yeah. And I always go just for just small seeing, work purposes. Yeah, and seeing, seeing people. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we do go, <coughs> maybe I'll be there. I don't know if we're going to organize a meetup. No. Not that big. No. Uh, not <laughs> I wish. Yeah, oh, I oh wish. come to the checkpoint chat meetup. Uh. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe we'll be there. I don't know. Yeah, we will see closer to the time. Okay, if Sandy is Alessandra's nickname, what is Matthew's nickname? Fig. Everyone calls me Fig. So family, just call me Matthew or Matt. Uh, Fig. Friends call me Fig. Even my work colleagues call Fig. And there's a funny story for that, actually. So every Friday at work, we have a thing called BGG, where we sort of just, the whole office gets together and we recap the week and like we sort of wind down. Yeah, it stands for... Um, Big Gaming Group. <laughs> uh, it was a tradition that started at the office years ago, which is sort of the name stuck, but we don't do what used to happen. I think it stands for bad, good, great. So each Friday they would like have that that wind down meeting and then talk about like what went well in the week, what went okay. wrong. Uh, but the name's just stuck, so it's called BGG. Um, and there's a thing that happens where every Friday you can send out a shout out. So like if I work with a colleague and I'm like, wow, that guy did really good work. It's just a way to announce like, hey, okay. like, well done for That's your cool. work on that campaign. Like, it was really good. Client loved it, whatever. For some reason, this has reminded me of um, when I was in LA. I was with my friend uh, Greg, who's now living in China. And I saw a shop for Uggs. You know the boots? Oh, yeah. 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 And he's like, oh, in, in China, people don't call it Uggs. They say UGG. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> UGG. Oh, it's man. Like, okay. Oops. Cool. <laughs> Maybe we're saying it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Let's reach out to the brand manager. And yeah. See what UGG. they say. It's not um, NES, it's NES. <laughs> but so one of the shout outs was from there's a new Matt at the office. Okay. okay. So there are now three Matthews at Fucking the office. Imposter Matt. But then when they read it, like, are there three Matts now? And then people, like, I'm not even joking. The whole office is like, no, there's only two because Fig isn't known as Matthew. <laughs> so everyone at my office knows me as Fig. And I've been told multiple times like it's so irritating when i try to email you because i type in math and you don't come up yeah. i mean i type in fig and you don't come up <laughs> so yeah and and if if it's worth anything i've had people ask me like people that don't know me that were like so fig like what's what's your surname and i'm like uh, my, my parents did not name me fig <laughs> like it's just a nickname Figura? i do not know this hmm. so yeah fig is just the easy nickname because my surname's figura or figgy stardust figgy st- <laughs> stardust Okay, next question. Alessandra's gaming aversion is Tetris. What game does Matthew Dust like? I actually don't know. I did think about this and I don't, nothing comes to mind where I think of playing it up and it's made me physically angry or averse to Tetris like Sandy is. Mm. I just love that I've spun you into a Tetris hating. No, I mean, I embrace <laughs> it because it's not false. I it guess. is not false. If I do think of one, I will let you know, Meg. So there's nothing that comes to mind right at the moment. And final question. Will there ever be a checkpoint chat recording at Matthew's home? No, no. <laughs> no. Is- and I'll and I'll tell you why. It's because we have all this really complex equipment here, and the microphones and the sound yeah. and all of that can be packed up really easily. So the real reason is that Matthew lives in a cottage with fucking spiders. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! And I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to but have it, these things going all but over me. But it's winter now. There's no mm. spiders. Oh, sure, yeah. 
That's what they want you to think. Oh my gosh. I do think so. I've moved into Thlensk and I do think, yeah, it's winter, but when I'm living there full time in spring and summer, what am I going to do with all Rest in all, peace. All my spider friends. Rest in peace. I'll embrace him. I'll bring, I'm going to fumigate you before you I'll, walk into my house. I'll bring some to visit you. Jesus. I would never do that. I, I can't even look at one. Nah, just logistically, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. I mean, we could. Yeah, but really I, no, it's like, it, I don't know, like what? difference does it make it doesn't the day. yeah it, it's actually even better if, to to record in the same space uh every week because then we don't have to adjust acoustics or anything no, not no. that we have very technical we've, ones we've got the best acoustics everyone's speaking of acoustics um we gave a shout out to a podcast last week um the one that neilan is on uh board game um, barrage yeah board game barrage and i saw a photo of theirs earlier this week they were using a blue yeti so like the the condenser mic i have here yeah um to record uh but they basically were like under sheets so that there was no sound <laughs> bouncing and i was like that's oh. dedication that's, <laughs> yeah that's she's like, good. i mean I the I, audio is fucking fantastic so it yeah works. i think our sound setup's okay though like i listen to some yeah. of our recordings i'm like yeah yeah sounds yeah. good sounds good i mean it would be nice if we had a bit more audio audio proofing around here but otherwise it's yeah. fine because Can- i've just got wooden floors and uh, stone walls so it's like, <laughs> it's like sound nope. is just enjoying its bounce, <laughs> just yeah. bouncing back and forth yeah <clears throat> and then last question not from me that was the last one from me thank you for all the questions mm. uh, next one comes from Corey Stratum this is a zinger he says define a good pizza actually oh yes what, what makes a pizza great so I am of the impression that a pizza does not need meat to be good like uh, well, I don't <clears throat> disagree with that meat meat pizzas are great Mm. But some of my favorite pizzas have no meat on them. Like, um, I really like ones with peppers and olives and feta. Oh, yeah. Like, olives and feta yeah, are just yeah, great. Yeah. As long as the feta is good, because sometimes it's too salty. Yeah. And then it's just like, you know. It just takes, yeah. Um, it takes the... If I'm feeling wild, I'll get a Hawaiian. Whoa, if you're living like yeah. a Hawaiian. A, a Hawaiian. In, it... But instead of a ham, I get olives. Oh, so my gosh. I thought you were going to... I was going to say you replaced the pineapple. I was like, no, fuck that. So that I was like, is this why, is this why it's wild? Because when you want to start like internet arguments, like I'm feeling wild, I'm going to get a Hawaiian. No, no, no. Post a, to me, it's a sweet and salty Hawaiian. <laughs> I have like, no issue with pineapple. You, you just get pineapple and it's sweet and then the olives are salty and it's fucking great. That's and actually, then if you want to be wild, you put feta on that. Olives and pineapple. It's good. It's I won't even lie. Good. That when, you, when you explain it like that, I'm like, it actually sounds like a good balance. So good. Yeah, what's, so your, what's your what's your so go-to? my my go you're to you're a of pizza so my, uh, yes, I, I love pizza so yeah it's, Matt, it, it's I've never seen someone love pizza <laughs> so, so much it's Matt's a problem it's but crazy. I love it it's so good um my go to is usually uh, chicken and avocado pizza that's always good I just I mean I just love avocado and I, I'm not really a meat person on pizza but I say mm. this but my fa- so if I go to any place nine out of ten times it's chicken and avocado because that's like a safe pizza for me do you not put eat. some pep juice on there spice nah, that shit up it, de- it depends it depends but my favorite pizza though is from a place down the road from where i live called franco's mm. um <laughs> which visit. which my brother pointed out last week i was like yeah man i was feeling so ill and i ate at franco's by the way franco's is a really great pizza place like <laughs> I, di- I didn't really paint it in the best light so what just for the record what made me sick was not food i think it was a, ate a spider yeah well maybe I think it was a bug going around because late in the week a colleague of mine had the exact same thing. Oh, is it? Like so I don't think I don't think it was food related at all. Huh. Um, so yeah, let me just clear Franco's name quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little Italian uh, pizza and pasta place that's been there for I think thirty or forty years it's now. It's like a family owned thing. It's it's a proper. Sweet. You walk in, you see like there's the dad and the mom. Like oh, the, so wow. the dad's the founder, obviously with the mom. But then you see like the kids working there and it's like a proper family establishment. Child labor. So yeah, sweet. No, but the, the children are, no, but the children are like adults now. No, that's I'm not talking like, oh, <laughs> are they teenagers? <laughs> oh, the, the makeup's really good. <laughs> no, but that's cool. Like family owned Italian restaurants yeah, always the it's, best. Yeah, so they, they've been there for a long time and you know that they just mastered, masters at what they do. And mm. um, they have a pizza, which I touched on last week called the Diavola, mm. which is that uh, salami and garlic and, uh, oh, peppers oh it's so garlic. good it's it's like hands down my favorite pizza um thin base and yeah yeah th- th- this is a good question like uh cory asked what makes a good pizza and i think um the base is really important yeah like it needs to be a thinnish for me it needs to be a thinnish base but not super thin that it's like a biscuit yeah yeah um but also like firm enough that it supports the 
the toppings and like a little bit of crunch like not, yeah, a little bit not, of crunch. not like to the point where it's like especially eating a biscuit, especially yeah. on the ends yeah yeah, yeah. like like the yeah. i mean so this this <clears throat> pizza from franco's is diavolo what i end up doing is i eat i eat all the pizza and i leave the crusts and i eat them at the end because mm. i love the crust is really good and you get that like little bit of burnt it, flour yeah it's like eating almost like breadsticks yeah, for, sorry for the bad yeah. comparison but it's that good um, um yeah thin, like, thin base, like i, think, I know uh, pizza hut locally which is actually not as terrible as people make it out to be they do a thick base one i'm mm. not a fan of that yeah um i don't know it just I feels th- like i'm eating too much dough um, I, th- I think if i want to like if i want to be wild <laughs> i'm not going to exchange my my ham for for olives on pizza but i might have a thick base pizza but i tend to prefer the thin base mm. um and f- as for what makes it pizza good like topping wise i don't know like i I can eat a margarita and be happy oh yeah like Like, uh, to to me a good margarita trumps anything yeah it's it's really good just that tomato (laughs) base and the cheese and the thing they don't put on margaritas here is the the basil like oh yeah yeah whenever some the 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 hipster places do if you go to like a food market that's how it should be done like if you go to the states like and i've i've had really really good pizza in uh america in in cities which aren't known for good pizza Mm. like LA and San Francisco aren't known for good pizza. But like you order a margarita and it has the basil and the basil is slightly toasted mm. and it's it's so good. It's, it's yummy. Mm. I did have a phenomenal pizza last year in San Francisco. Um, my pal Ludwig there, he ordered from a place that him and his husband really love. And it was like a, you know, like Chicago deep dish pizzas. Mm. So it's almost like... It's super, like a pie. Yeah, it's like almost, a pie. Yeah. But this one wasn't the traditional Chicago deep dish. It had like chicken and had peppers and lots of different cheeses and it was so good it was yeah. like it was like a layered pizza so i had yeah. like one slice and i was full because oh, it was just so, much. It was so fucking much. great why you can get like the debonish triple stack if you want it's, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the n- same thing isn't it for a week or something <laughs> <laughs> whoa jesus <laughs> guess we're never yeah. getting sponsored by that no no <laughs> oh, um, but yeah i'm done with, that's it, like yeah. there's loads of great pizza um but me i'm a thin base man <sighs> you're a thin base thin base and like not more than like five thin, like three to four toppings maybe a thin base olive and pineapple kind of kind of graph now people so people think that sounds awful but i, I might actually try that it Dude, seems so interesting yeah. put, a, put a bit of chili on there as well oh, yeah that's one thing i always like with pizzas tabasco and yeah tabasco and it's black pepper oh yeah 100 percent too now i want pizza yeah, <laughs> this too. is all your fault Corey. why and that's i think that's all the questions we is that have all the questions that's all the questions oh. i don't think i missed any oh. no there was some banter on twitter but no other questions <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Bit Darren, of a quiet week. This is um, you. You tweeted about you find you're going to play Hitman, and then oh, Darren's yes. like, "How are we even still frenemies?" And, and so he <laughs> says, "I can't wait to travel back in time and hear all about how great this game is on an upcoming episode of Checkpoint." Damn right, I'm we're gonna not play that Hitman far right behind. Now. Okay, I'm going to play Hitman <laughs> and talk about it for an hour next week, just to spite I mean, we, you. We spoke about God of All today, and it's yeah, not exactly. like it came it's out in April. I talk about No Man's so. Sky. It's only two years old. Two years old. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we're a, we're a gaming podcast. We talk about all the things, man. Exactly, it's, we have to. It's not age specific. What is this? We have to. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening thank, to thank this you. completely <laughs> ridiculous. No, thank show. you. <laughs> Jeez, if you've stuck with us for eighteen of these shows, yes. man, uh, guess we can't get rid of you now. Mm. Um, but yeah, thank you for all your support. Questions as always at Checkpoint Chat on Twitter and Checkpoint Chat Podcast at gmail dot com. If you want to have a lengthy you're welcome to send us like an essay yeah as a, please do give I, us I, background i, I don't mean care. look how much fun we had <laughs> answering the pizza question yeah exactly because I, mean, I know twitter's super limited and whatever but yeah. um Start hopefully that. we'll have a facebook page up soonish <laughs> who knows <laughs> when when al says that he's like yeah hopefully you have a facebook yeah, page he looks at me glaring has, at has a gun like sticking out yeah. of the drawer <laughs> i'm just stroking my pet tiger here waiting oh, for it wow. to say yeah <laughs> um so then i'm sure we can leave questions and answers there yeah um and as always you can catch us on apple podcasts google podcasts anchor fm especially if you want segmented pieces Mm. um and basically anywhere else you get your podcast except soundcloud because fuck soundcloud SoundCloud. um and yeah and don't don't forget to sprinkle sprinkle some reviews that have Mm, nice. mm. be like salt bay and so, sprinkle, yeah, some sprink, reviews. <laughs> sprinkle some we'll reviews memes from a year ago oh <laughs> that now isn't salt bay like two years old now is it two years uh, wasn't it know. beginning of this year no, no it, it couldn't year. have been because it was, it was in year. destiny last year it was last Shit. year man Dude, we old meme. salt bay wow. meme i'll look this up after the show yes <laughs> but anyways um 
Thank you so much for listening. This has been episode 18 of Checkpoint Chat. We'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Felicia. Okay,